So I've made a new completely empty, oh, well, I just lost it. Let's create a new custom GPT. I'm not gonna bother putting anything in here yet. I'm simply gonna go all the way down on the configure uh, tab to create new action. And I could just start typing my schema in here, but we're not gonna do that, at least not right now. First of all, there are far better editors for making these schemas. We'll talk about the formatting and if we're used, there's two different formats we can use and they get very annoying to try and type in this small window. There's no nice auto formatting. So we're not going to do that. What I'm actually gonna do is click on this, get help from Actions GPT. Actions GPT is a custom GPT made by OpenAI to help other people make these particular open API specification files. So if you look at some of the conversation starters, it says, you know, create a spec for this API. So I'm going to ask it to do that. Create me a spec for this simple API. And I'm gonna tell it get, and then this URL, which returns data about the current price of Bitcoin. I'm gonna hit enter. And if it does its job, it's usually pretty good. It will make me an open API 3.0 specification for this particular endpoint. So it does all the sort of metadata up top. So this is all according to the API. It says info, title, Bitcoin price API, description, version, servers. It says, here's the base URL, https colon slash slash api.coincap.io slash v2. And then it says, here's one path. If you send a request to slash assets slash Bitcoin, as a get request, we'll talk about operation ID in a little bit, but think of it as just a name for what this does, get Bitcoin price. There's a summary that says returns current price data for Bitcoin, responses, 200, description. So let's just start, there's quite a bit here, but let's start with this. Copy this, go over to my own custom GPT and paste this schema in. Notice now I have a particular new action under available actions called get Bitcoin price. It says here's a get request to slash asset slash Bitcoin. Now the next thing I'm going to do is actually delete almost everything in here to keep it super simple because we haven't really talked about the format of any of this yet. We will get there. All I'm going to leave is the initial sort of metadata stuff that says, hey, here's a schema for my Bitcoin price API I want you to know about. Here's what it does. Version 1.0.0 doesn't really matter there. Versioning can be important for other use cases, but for a custom GPT, it's not that critical. And then it says, here's the server. Here's one path. Send a get request. We'll give it a name. This operation is called get Bitcoin price. If I change that, by the way, if I instead call it get current Bitcoin price, now my action just has a different name down here. And then a little summary about what it does. Okay, so now let's try testing this action. There's a couple ways of doing this. One is to simply try doing it via text, say something like, what is the current price of Bitcoin? And okay, it said stop talking to. Let's try that again. <laughs> Not sure what happened there. Okay, now it's trying to call my action. It wants to talk to coincap.io, right? It needs to send some data, make a request. I'll say always allow because I trust this. Okay, so it says it called an endpoint, right? This is where what it called. It got a response back. This is the response it got back. Compare that to our response over here. The numbers are gonna be slightly different, like specifically the price will be different but it's the exact same format back. And then the current price of Bitcoin is approximately $51,441.3. And if we compare that to what it got back from the API, there we are. Okay, so what we did was we set up an action by asking this other GPT, Actions GPT, to help us write the schema because this can get tedious to write ourselves. We still have to understand how this works and we will get there. This is just our very first action. All that we did was we told it, hey, 
here's a thing that you can do and at, you can send a get request to api.coincap.io slash v2 slash assets slash Bitcoin as a get request and it should return the current price data for Bitcoin. Now, if I try something else, like what is the current price of Ethereum? It tells me $2,280, right? But it also doesn't, it's not confident. It says it's approximately, I don't have the live price. Okay. So if I want to add in another possible endpoint here, first I have to figure out what is that endpoint for Ethereum. Um, we'll just test it over here. It might literally just be Ethereum. Let's see. It is. So we can now add in another path in here. And we'll do this manually this time. Now this particular schema, the way that this is set up, this is written using something called YAML, where the indentation matters here. So I'm going to say you can also send a request to assets slash Ethereum, another cryptocurrency. I'll just copy this here. Now this is formatted incorrectly. If I click format, yeah, it doesn't quite work for me. So this is one of the most annoying parts of this editor. You have to do this manually. We'll see some other solutions later. Okay. Get current Ethereum price will be the name of this action. Okay. So it's also a get request, right? The API does not support post requests. So if you send a get request to assets slash Bitcoin, we'll get the current Bitcoin price. If you send a get request to assets slash Ethereum, we'll get the current Ethereum price. So let's try that out. Let's try asking the same question. What is the current price of Ethereum? Aha, it's trying to use our actions. I'll allow it. And let's look at the response it got back this time. It got back an Ethereum response that says the current price is $2,928. Perfect. Let's try it with Bitcoin. What is the current Bitcoin price? And now it's sending, hopefully, a different request to this particular URL asset slash Bitcoin. So it's basically doing what exactly what we've been doing using Insomnia, just sending an API call. The biggest difference is we have to document it, right? And tell it about the existence of these particular endpoints and how they work. And it says, yeah, Bitcoin price is $51,458.87. Perfect. We now have two separate actions. There would be a better way to rewrite this. We can worry about this later. We could actually just write this as assets slash and then some particular currency as a variable that's more advanced. We don't need to worry about it, but this works for now. We have two separate actions, one for Bitcoin, one for Ethereum. It, without these actions, it's unable to give us an accurate price. With them, assuming the API is accurate, it's able to give us live, very recent prices.